All right, so you're in time for an eBay unboxing. Let's do this in fast motion. All right, so there's a story behind this. The seller had an opening bid of $9.99. Sorry for my voice, I'm losing it. And uh, they had a make an offer button. So I offered her $100. And then she turned down my offer, it disappeared. Then I made her a second offer of $125. She turned down my offer. By the way, she really didn't know what this was. And uh, she turned down the second offer. And then I ended up bidding on it. And at the last five seconds of the auction, I won it for $56. So if the seller wasn't such a greedy ass, they would have gotten at least $100 or $125 for this item. So a lot of times you'll come across on eBay auction one of these bottles. So you will only see for auction one of these bottles, sands the rest of the stuff, and even one, one of these bottles could sell for as much as $250 to $500, sometimes even higher, eight to $900 to $1,000, depending on the type of glass. Sometimes it came in colored glass, like a beautiful cobalt blue glass, or ruby red glass, or opaline glass. And somebody's going to correct me. It's either opaline or opaline. I really don't care. But um, French people were known to make things extravagant, quite beautiful, and really fancy, as you can see here. Some of these bottles would have feet on them. They would be placed into a Doré bronze or Omelou metal bronze stand with feet, and these would be really fancier. These are more plain because it's clear glass, but it doesn't actually uh, take away from the value because now we have three of them. So they say there's power in the numbers, in, in, the, uh, in the number, uh, powers in numbers. How do they say it? You know what I mean. So now we got triple, triple thread over here. All right, so the hinge like really completely gave way, but I did clean it with some leather cleaner and it's actually looking brighter. I placed the handles back on it, and then I uh, put this on the back. I made like little hinges, but they really didn't hold because the inside was the problem. The inside uh, fabric gave way. So let's try to open this and see if this worked, what I just did. Oh, wait, hold on. I'm trying to do this and get the top open. Okay, there we go. And so I put fabric in there. I don't know if you can see that, and that'll keep it from this is antique fabric so thank god it's like perfect for this all right so um i mean it doesn't look it's not like the greatest but it's keeping the top together with the bottom and it's not going to hurt the value because now we we're keeping this so that it actually stays together and i'll turn this around again i condition the leather the handles are now reattached and then i put little hinges on them there we go and again inside we have this so now the, the lid is going to, there, it's not going to separate, which is fantastic. All right, so let's put these back. They all have their original stoppers, which is quite cool. Nothing is broken. That's another thing. Most of these have cracks or damage to them. This does not have cracks or damage to it. So we'll place these back in. And let's find out more about these, these really expensive and quite valuable souvenirs that were brought back from the Grand Tour of Paris. All right, so we're on my favorite, favorite research website, Cleopatra's Boudoir, and it's at cleopatrasboudoir.blogspot.com. I'm giving her a shout out. I don't know her personally, but man, does she have great information. Here we go. Scent cases from the Grand Tour. What we term perfume caskets today were known as scent cases during the 19th century. These were often purchased in Europe, most notably in Paris. Originally purchased from the shopping arcades at the famous Palais Royal in Paris, these retail outlets sold luxury goods such as fine jewelry, furs, paintings, and furniture to the wealthy elite. The peak of the casket manufacturer is the Napoleon III period from 1852 to 1870. These were purchased as souvenirs for folks who would go on the grand tour throughout Europe. During the Victorian era, the imagination of Europe's wealthy elite had been fired by the archaeological discoveries, and out of curiosity, folks would travel across the continent to visit these important sites. The Grand Tour usually consisted of traveling to major European countries, England, Paris, Switzerland, southern France and Italy, etc., sailing by steamship, and then traveling overland via carriages. 
Usually it was the men who did the majority of the traveling, and they would bring back lovely trinkets, such as the perfume cases, as a gift for their female loved ones back home. The young men followed a tour pattern, which had included areas of Europe most associated with continued education. The tours were also extended to young women as well, who might travel with their families. While on tour in France, they may also have picked up other treasures, such as scent bottles and gilded caskets, objects for the vanity made of ormolu and shells, marble and ornate gilded wire, all purchased at the Palais Royal. And here's some examples. This one, Victorian scent case with two perfume bottles with Aglo Mise flip-top caps. And the little caskets were made for travel use but still looked adorable on the vanity table as well. The majority of the cases had their outer surface covered in high-quality tooled leather, sometimes adornments such as brass studs, ivory knobs, mother-of-pearl, onyx, malachite, carnelian, or other stone cabochons were added to the case as decorative shock absorbers. Other cases may be covered with velvet or inlaid with marquetry, pewter, stringing, ivory, silver, or gold. The cases were well-appointed with fitted interiors, usually lined in velvet or silk. The bottles were made to fit these interiors perfectly and would stay snug during the jostling in a horse-drawn carriage or sailing across the ocean in a schooner, or schooner, which were two main modes of traveling at the time. The bottles were sold empty so that the owner could decant their own perfume, scented vinegar, vinaigrette, or smelling salts into the bottle. Oftentimes, our perfume or cologne and smelling salts would be side by side in the caskets. And here's another example. Let's zoom in and take a look. Victorian scent case with six crystal perfume bottles. Wow, this one is really amazing. Six of them. All right, let's keep going. Here's another one. Victorian wooden scent case with three bottles. And this one made out of wood. And there you go. Here's another example. And this one is Victorian scent casket with three gilt bottles. And this looks like ebonized wood of some sort. And you can see how grand these bottles were. These are enameled in gold gilt. And they were gilded gold. There we go. Victorian marquetry scent case with three bottles. And again, look how fancy the bottles were in a beautiful marquetry wooden box. And again, they would all fit in the little spots that were actually placed inside the box. And they would fit in there like a glove. Let's continue to look. This one is extravagant. Absolutely amazing. And so this one is a Victorian tortoiseshell scent case with four bottles. And you can see the beautiful bottles with the ormolu, which is gilded gold, and the pictures on the top of the scent bottles showing you scenes of France. Is the tortoiseshell, this one would have locked. Really quite beautiful. Look at the ornate feet or legs on it. And it says, these caskets were generally put together in France. The cut crystal bottles were fine polished for a smooth finish. Sometimes you can find colored, transparent, or translucent opaline glass bottles. Bottles can be found either in cylindrical shapes or little square shapes. The hinged flip caps are gilded brass and fitted with the thinnest of glass lens covers. Underneath the glass are small round miniature scenes of landmarks. They have been found in a variety of mediums. Lithographed paper, very aglomise, painted scenes on the underside of the glass itself, or sometimes thin fragile discs of hand-painted ivory. The scenes in the pictures were often of notable landmarks. Architectural icons such as the Arc de Triomphe, Notre Dame Cathedral, the Parthenon, fountains, palaces, towers, or other famous buildings. The bottles were fitted with tiny ground glass stoppers and would be positioned in such a way that the flip caps would keep them in place so that the perfume seepage was deterred during travel. Some perfume companies house their perfumes inside these cases. Eugene Rimmel put out a nice leather-covered example lined with red velvet and containing two bottles. Other scent cases were made of opaline glass, cut crystal, onyx, tortoiseshell panels, agate, or agate, marble, ivory, and ormolu. Those were generally made to sit upon the vanity table as they would be too fragile to travel with. Here's another example. By the way, I have many of these examples in my collection of the wooden versions. Victorian scent case by Eugene Rimmel. And there you go. That's what the bottles looked like. And you can see on the top, it looks like very ornamental with a ring. Very, very, very pretty. Here's another example. And this one is an unusual ormolu Victorian scent case with two bottles in it. And of course, the more bottles that are in it that are unbroken, the more value. And the cases, actually, the more ornate they were, of course, the more value you will have, especially if it's tortoiseshell, mother of pearl, or some of the really precious gems placed on it. Here's another example. This is an unusual Victorian folding table scent casket 
So look at that underneath this little table with panels of photographs or pictures or paintings of the scenes of the different places in Paris. You would have this right there. Let's zoom in. And look how they would suspend from underneath this little gold ormolu or bronze table. Very quite pretty. Has a little panel that opens up from the top so you can pull up the perfume bottle through it. Here's another really quite lovely one. Victorian opaline scent case with two bottles. Now this was a glass that was hand enameled. I don't know if you can see that, but that is quite beautiful. Look at the bottles. And one of these would be very expensive. I've seen them on eBay sell for as high as about $900 to $1,000 and sometimes even more, depending on how many bottles are in there. This one is really absolutely insanely beautiful. Victorian Ormolu and Anglo Mise scent case. And there's panels going around the box on the outer part of the box showing different scenes of Paris. This one has multiple bottles inside of it and it's lined with silk as we can see here. On the top as well we have panels with pictures. Now I had this same exact one in my collection and a very very wealthy person from Dubai per uh, purchased it for me. He was an actual race car driver and he raced, he raced Ferraris and Lamborghinis and sadly I should have never sold this particular item, I sold it on Etsy for $895, and I'm very sad that I sold it. I wish I still had it in my collection. These caskets were not only offered at the Palais Royal, which was a really, really amazing palace that the kings and queens lived in, but could also be had from perfumery shops, jewelry shops, catalogs, and were even advertised in magazines such as, such as Youth's Companion. In an 1880 volume of Youth's Companion, there were three caskets available. Russia leather perfume case number 170. And I'm not going to go through this, but these were Russian leather. I don't know if mine is considered Russian leather. What is Russian leather? I guess we don't know. But here's some example from the catalog. And they were covered in Russian leather. And they were only three inches by four inches in, in size. There are so many different versions of these caskets that not one person in the world can own all of them. From the materials used to the shapes of the caskets, each is its own work of art. All caskets are made up of wood, but what covers the caskets can differ. One is able to locate caskets whose outer surfaces are made of boule, tortoise, uh, tortoiseshell, or it's actually boule, it's pronounced, I apologize. Paper mache, ivory, early types of plastic, which would be like a celluloid type of uh, material, bronze, or even velvet. Okay, so here on eBay, we just have two bottles, and they're without their casket. And they're selling for $394. Now, if they have any cracks, chips, or damage, they are actually worth 60 to 75% less than they should be. So it really, really harms the value if there's any kind of damage. Now, on many occasions, I'll find these, and they'll be missing the actual illustration on the top, or the glass that's covering it will be cracked and broken into a million pieces or spider webbed. But these actually look like they're in really phenomenal, pristine condition. Now, a lot of times the stoppers that they would have came with are missing. You'll see the stopper in this example. That really doesn't hurt the value very much, but damage will definitely hurt the value. Our next is, here's another leather caddy, and it comes with two perfume bottles in it. And this one was damaged. And the person restored the box because the box, um, actually, the box top actually broke off from age, which is quite common. This one is five inches by two and a half. Mine is actually seven inches across, so it's actually a larger one. And this one is being sold for $695, which is a high amount of money. And uh, the person actually repaired it by adding a piano hinge on the inside. Sadly, you will find a lot of these, and the tops will actually be separated from the bottom part of the box and it's broken. So uh, the chances of finding these in mint condition are very slim. Now here we have another one dated 1850s, $745. This is tortoise or Malou scent ca caddy. And you can see sometimes the tortoise shell wasn't really tortoise shell. It was simulated tortoise shell because tortoise shell was very, very expensive back then. And so the way to tell is generally if you hold it up to light, you can look through it, and it's not opaque, but you can actually see through it. But a lot of times, this was simulated and not real tortoise shell. And uh, this one is from 1850 to 1870, and it says that this type of casket usually has cracks, hairlines, breaks, or damage, but this one has no damage except for one stopper is missing. And that is actually really cool. 
Now here's another example, and this one has a beautiful picture in the top in a panel with a glass covering it. This one locked, and this one came with really fancy ones. And I told you, they do come in different colors. It's not always clear. This is opaline glass, and this one is selling for $765. Really quite beautiful. There's the illustrations on the top. I can see in the picture that the glass panel is broken out on this one and broken out on this one. But that really doesn't hurt the value that much. But it is nice when you get them really intact. And uh, I'm going to show you a couple of examples that I have in my collection. <laughs> I have a couple of them hitting inside my cabinet. So you can see two caddies up here. And you can see one black ebonized wood caddy right there. And inside is enclosed with those beautiful, beautiful French perfume bottles. Don't know if you could see that. I also have this beautiful Baccarat glass. Four bottles in one caddy with beautiful Greek muses going around it or Roman muses. Look at the stoppers on the top. And that's four bottles in one. In my collection, I have probably about four or five more of these uh, wooden versions. And I always grab them when I can find them for a good price. Here's another example. Really beautiful marquetry. And this one is selling for 500 I think this is euro. This is euros. 575 euros, which probably in U.S. dollars would be about 600 U.S. dollars. Really quite beautiful. And you can see the bottles are really ornate. They do need to probably be cleaned, but it's just... It's better to leave them alone because people like patina. Look at the wood. You can see that really beautiful marquetry work. Very, very beautiful. And on the top we have illustrations again of, it looks like Paris. Okay, so somebody got a really good deal at $202.98 for one of these bottles. And it's opaline. And yeah, somebody really, really lucked out at $202.98. Even though it's one bottle, it is absolutely exquisite. And it has feet on the bottom. It's footed. And I have one such bottle in my collection as well. And here we go. Uh, we have another leather casket caddy set with three bottles selling for $744.25. And you can see, look how cute these are. These are absolutely adorable. And last but not least, we have another one being sold for $800 on eBay. And this one looks a little toasty, but it doesn't matter because people like the patina and the age on these. They don't seem to mind. It uh, actually enhances sometimes the value because you can see the age on it. 175 years old is quite amazing if you ask me. So the seller must be kicking herself in the freaking ass for not accepting my $125 offer. Uh, but I ended up getting lucky that she didn't accept my offer. I really thought people were going to find this, even though it was like in a really bad category. And uh, she didn't describe it correctly. But damn, I got lucky. 175 years old. And the fact that I was able to make it even look better with the leather conditioner and adding new hinges onto it and boom. And so like, wow, all right? So what do you think? Write in the comments below. Uh, did you see anything ever so adorable as this? I mean, this is the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. Thank you so much for watching. This was a great score at 56 bucks. By the way, four second snipe. I went in there with four seconds left. The person underneath me bid $55 and... um. I went up to $256 because I always go odd and boom. So the seller should have just accept my damn offer and uh, didn't and see what happens when you get greedy. And the seller probably thought, oh, I'll get big bucks for this, uh, even though she didn't actually describe it correctly. But booyah. I mean, look at this. Okay. So, like, I'm doing the total happy dance. If I sound like a braggart, I apologize. I don't generally get this lucky. And so there we go. We're going to place this back in here. And it'll sit in here for another 175 years. And I'm going to tell you right now, 
I am not going to like even touch this because this is so fragile. -y. It's fragile. -y. All right, guys, I'll see you all on the next one. Wish me luck on my hunt. Cause let me tell you something. It is not something you get every day for 56 bucks with free shipping.